Welcome back guys, it's Josie or Jozal and I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to be covering easily one of the most insane and badass characters to ever do it, Escanor the Lion Sin of Pride. Escanor is without a doubt my favorite character in The Seven Deadly Sins and is one of my favorite characters in all of anime and manga. I figured I had to do my man justice with a nice in-depth video covering his character from front to back. I'm going to go into his backstory first, then I'll delve into his character more in depth later on in the video. One more thing, if you are a male and you are below 7 foot tall, you are legally obligated to subscribe. Yeah, I just asked my lawyer and he said that was the case, so yeah, you gotta subscribe now. Go, go do it. Yeah, and make sure you join the Discord. We don't have many members, so we are trying to grow and have a nice community of anime and manga fans. So yeah, it'd be nice if you guys go, go and join it. If you guys haven't watched this series, please do not watch this video. It's going to spoil damn near everything. So yeah, that was your warning. All right, enough talk. This is Escanor Explained. Escanor started out as the prince of the kingdom of Castiello. At birth, Escanor was chosen to take on the grace Sunshine. Sunshine is a power that makes the user grow increasingly powerful starting at sunrise and reaching the peak of its power at noon. The Sunshine power lay dormant inside of Escanor until one day, his brother Damon was bullying him and he retaliated, awakening his power. He accidentally broke Damon's arm, subsequently being declared a monster. Escanor was driven away and chased out of the kingdom. He managed to hide away in a barrel and set adrift at sea, aided by a kind woman named Rosa. Escanor hoped to find refuge in a place that's safer than his home kingdom, but he was met with nothing but the same. No matter how much he helped people, he was still perceived a monster. It's unfortunate that they drove him away because Escanor returned at some point to seek out Rosa, only to find that the kingdom was in ruins and Rosa was nowhere to be found. It was discovered later that the kingdom was destroyed by barbarians, which Escanor could have easily stopped if he was never driven away. 25 years later, Escanor was stopping some monsters in Leoness when several holy knights, including the great holy knight Zeratras, attempted to reprehend him, believing he was the source of the problem. Again, the people of the villages and towns were terrified of him because of his sheer size and demeanor, so they were quick to judge him based on that. This is when Escanor first meets Meliodas and Merlin, who asked him to join him. Despite that, they were still ordered by the king to restrain Escanor, so they did. After being taken prisoner, he was labeled a traitor and accused of terrorizing and destroying many villages. Not only that, he also significantly damaged the holy knight who tried to restrain him, so they sentenced him to flogging, followed by public hanging. After being labeled the sin of pride, Escanor decides to accept his punishment after multiple failed attempts to explain what happened. Before it could be followed through, Meliodas intervenes, telling the king that he would take care of Escanor and make sure he doesn't get into any more trouble. Meliodas and Merlin take Escanor to meet the rest of the group and introduce him as the seventh and last member of the Seven Deadly Sins. Escanor is very cautious of his new companions, but they all welcome him with pleasant reception. Despite this, Escanor decides to leave for the mountains where he is followed by Merlin. He shares with her that he feels good that someone actually searched for him because no one wanted to be around him because of his jarring outward appearance during the day. Merlin expresses her intrigue about him and again extends her hand for him to join them. Escanor then tells her that she reminds him of Rosa, in appearance and the good things that she says about his curse. When the rest of the group shows up, Escanor is relieved to find out that he is not the only one with skeletons in his closet and they share this sentiment with him. Repent for your sins by living your life to the fullest. After the group exchanges words, Bond gets annoyed by Escanor and attacks him after hearing him say that he deserves to die. Meliodas stops Bond and tells Escanor that they will have a fight at noon to decide if he will join the sins or not. The outcome being that he will join if he loses. The two fight and Escanor does indeed lose, rendering him a member of the sins once again. Before passing out, Merlin takes Escanor to Rosa at his request. He arrives at the capital of the dead where Rosa reveals to Escanor that she has been watching him all along and she is happy for him. I'm going to skip over the part where Escanor and the sins fight the vampires in Edinburgh. It doesn't really add to Escanor's history besides the fights and his relationship with Merlin. Merlin just asks Escanor near the end of the three part manga if she can hear his poems. It's not really anything important. And that brings us to the temporary disbanding of the seven deadly sins. The sins find Zeratras dead after a mission and are blamed for it. After Meliodas tells everyone to disperse and regroup later, Escanor formed a secret bar hidden in the mountains which actually thrived considering he made deliveries at times. 
So I think that just about covers Escanor's history, at least the most pivotal points. I like to actually go into his personality or things that I find interesting about his character, and then kind of delve into the abundance of his abilities and powers. I think it goes without saying that Escanor's personality is brazen as hell, at least in the sunshine state that is, however I find his nighttime state more interesting to talk about. It's not far fetched to assume that Escanor has had his fair share of trauma. All of the abuse from his brother and the seclusion of his home kingdom definitely shaped his character into a frail man that hates to step on people's toes or anger anyone. He is the exact opposite of his sunshine self. It's the perfect contrast. I find myself legitimately feeling sorry for him at times. There was a sense of connection from at least my perspective because I feel like when you're insecure in any capacity you can say that you relate on some level. Everything about him screams self-conscious when Escanor is not in his sunshine state. However, when he is in his sunshine state, he is a totally different person. I have to tell you, Escanor's overly confident attitude was literally the first time I had laughed at a character's boldness. It was so exaggerated it was comical and, and not in a bad way. When he talks down to his enemies it got me so hype and you can feel the courage and certainty from the page or the screen, namely his brief discussion with Esther Rosa. Esther Rosa's commandment is love. That means anyone that harbors hate in their heart towards him is immediately rendered immobilized. All of the other sins and allies of the sins couldn't make a move on Asterosa and he completely outmatched everyone there. Then out comes Escanor and strolls right up to Escanor standing nose to nose with him. He then tells Asterosa that he harbors no hate towards him, only pity. I swear to god when I read that I almost jumped out of my chair in excitement. Escanor is such a badass character and he could have easily been the most badass protagonist if he was written into a different story. Like I said in the beginning, if you haven't read Seven Daily Sins, you should stop watching this and go read it because I'm about to spoil a lot for you if you don't. I really wish Escanor didn't have to die because he was one of the best characters in the series, personally. However, I can understand why they did kill him off. I still have a problem with it considering they killed him off towards the end of the story. The Seven Deadly Sins is definitely over and it won't be returning so there is real no reason to kill him off. He wouldn't have been a hindrance in the story with a power imbalance because there was only a dozen chapters left until it ended. I don't necessarily think it ruins the series, but it would have been nice to see each of the characters get a happy ending after all we see them go through. Okay, so we've been over Escanor's history and his overall character, so let's go into his abilities. I've already mentioned Sunshine, but I think that's a good place to start, so like I mentioned before, Sunshine is an ability that Escanor received at birth. It grows increasingly powerful as the sun starts to rise and then reach his pinnacle at high noon, which Escanor hilariously said in this manga panel. All I could hear was McCree from Overwatch saying that exact line when I read that. It's high noon. I haven't mentioned power levels, but the manga and anime actually do a good job of telling us what a certain character's power level is at key points. In his fight with Galland, his power level was shown increasing by 5 points every second. We see a power level of 50,060 and it continues to rise. Not only that, we also see Escanor's body mass increase as well. His physical strength and endurance grows along with his power level. At times, we see just the sheer heat radiating off of his body is enough to reduce everything around him to ash, but he has some semblance of control. He can prevent his friends from being harmed as well as turning up the heat to melt even stone. One of his abilities we see is Cruel Sun. It is essentially a miniature sun that Escanor or creates any control with the hand gestures. Obviously the sun is extremely hot and this one is no exception. We actually see it melting armor nearby, so if we assume that the armor is forged out of steel, that would mean that the sun is at least 2750 degrees Fahrenheit or 1510 degrees Celsius because that's the melting point of steel. Which I think goes without saying that's super fucking hot. While in his sunshine state we see him using Super Slash, which he uses with his sacred treasure. Rita. It's an extremely strong slash that when delivered could be felt by others a considerable distance away. On the topic of his sacred treasure, Rita is a humongous axe that is extremely heavy. We even see Meliodas having difficulty lifting it, but Escanor never shows any difficulty swinging it around like a regular sword. Next we have everyone's favorite transformation, The One. I think The One is a good name for it because you could easily say, yeah, he's the one that's gonna kick your ass. His body bulks up to an even more ridiculous level. His body glows with flames and he has a more menacing, almost evil grin on his face and his pupils disappear. If you thought the sunshine state was powerful, well, the one makes it look like child's play. It increases Escanor's power way more than what we see before. 
It's hard to actually measure how much more powerful because there are no power level readings when he is in that form. What we do know is that Escanor beats Meliodas while he's in his assault mode, which Meliodas was dominating Escanor before the transformation. It was said that he is invincible, but I'm not so sure considering there is actually one step above the one. Before I move on to that, the one lasts for only a single minute, so whatever Escanor needs to do, he has to get it done in 60 seconds, and from what we see from the one, it's powerful enough to do just that. Escanor does have some other abilities like Divine Sword Escanor and Divine Spear Escanor, but I think I'm going to finish it off with the final and most powerful transformation, the One Ultimate. Now, the Seven Deadly Sins is no stranger to ass pulls. There were multiple things that happened in the series that had me thinking, I don't think that really makes sense in the context of what we've already established, but whatever. The one was supposed to last a minute, but Escanor extended it by literally exerting his life force outwards, which gave him this form, but in turn destroyed his body. Don't get me wrong, it's probably one of the coolest transformations I've seen in manga or anime. It's hard to express how much more powerful he gets because he was already on an unbelievable level before, but I guess the best way to put it in words is immeasurable. It was literally said that his power level was immeasurable and therefore potentially limitless and truly invincible. Once you get to that level of insanity in terms of power, there is not really a way of describing it. He went toe to toe with the Demon King at his max. I don't think there is definitive proof he was stronger because the Demon King was taken out by all the sins so we don't really get an answer in that regard. Like I said before, the one ultimate was a last ditch effort to get rid of the Demon King of their world. In the end it was successful but sadly Escanor lost his life because of it. Escanor knew he had used the sunshine power too much already so he went out like an absolute badass. I'm not going to lie, this actually had me tearing up. Seeing all that Escanor went through for him to die in such a beautiful way was bittersweet to say the least. On one hand, he finally got his kiss from Merlin who he had expressed his admiration for all throughout the series, and on the other he didn't get to live his life out in peace. It ended with a valiant battle that he fought till the bitter end. So yeah, that was Escanor. I hope I did this character justice with the video. If you guys liked it, make sure you subscribe and let me know what other characters you want to see me cover or what series. Um, I had a lot of fun making this video and I'm glad how it turned out. So yeah, just comment, like, subscribe, do all that. And yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Thanks.